In 2020, a lot of people lost their jobs, and in 2021, I would imagine it's going to continue the same for a while. There's like 20 or 30,000 units that go up for auction every single week. And so finding additional ways to make a little extra money if you hustle it out is a good thing. In today's video, I wanna teach you everything that I've learned about storage lockers and how to make real money from storage lockers. I think we've done 10 of them now. This was just a portion of the profits from one of the storage lockers. And I just thought a thousand dollar bill was cool. I didn't know they existed. I bought this for $2,200. It's a $1,000 bill, I bought it for $2,200. I'm gonna get it graded and it should be worth around $3,500 if it is graded at a good level, which it looks super clean. These are the three things that are gonna happen in today's video. First, I'm gonna bid on a storage locker. Here it is right here, I've got it up. Hopefully we will win it and I'm going to tell you my thoughts behind it and how much money I wanna spend on it. And then two, we're gonna go get the items, search the storage locker, find what else is in there. And then three, something that I don't usually show in my storage locker videos, we're going to sell all of the items in there and let you know exactly how much money we made from buying this storage locker. We've had some interesting comments from people and even emails from people. They say that I'm basically gambling, that I'm addicted to storage lockers. Well, yes, I do think it's really fun to buy storage lockers and it is fun to make actual money, but is this gambling? Is this like playing the lottery? In general, for the majority of the storage lockers, if you use good techniques, it is not a gamble. It actually should get at least your money back. And out of all the storage lockers that we have done, overall, we are up as far as money that we've made just off of selling the items inside of the storage locker. Have there been some videos that seem like a gamble? Yes, sometimes I will overpay for a locker because there's a safe inside of it and because for our viewers and for our audience and for our YouTube channel, we make back the money on our storage lockers just off of the views on the videos. So for us, it's not really a gamble. Whether there's things inside of the storage locker that we can resell or not, that is good content and it's really fun. But if you take away the YouTube views and you're just somebody that's buying storage lockers just to turn around and flip them to make some extra cash, out of the 10 that we've bought, even if you count the ones that were total bust, overall, we have made money on them because we've made smart decisions on the storage lockers that we've purchased. This video might take me two months to make, but for you, Get on the websites, look in your area. There's multiple websites for storage lockers or storage treasures or storage auctions. There's bid 13, there's a couple other ones. There's like a storage fox that are on there and see if you can find something that's within a hundred mile radius of where you live. Let's take a look at the storage locker that we have today. This is it, you can see it down here. It is in San Diego, California. Not a bad drive from where I'm at. And one cool thing about bid 13 is they actually show a video of them putting the lock on. So check this out. Here is the video. It shows you, check that out, there's golf clubs in the back, there are bikes, there's one, two, three, four, and then like a mini school bike right there. And, and then, then they, they go and they put the lock on it in the video. video. And, and then there's a bunch of bins in the back, back. so tons, tons of bins and, and some other stuff. stuff. You wanna look at the contents that are inside of the storage locker and find some experts and put a value on it. So as long as you get the locker for the price of the things that you can actually see, you know you're going to at least break even. You should at least break even. And then anything else that you find inside of the bins or anywhere else, that's just gonna make, be money on top of it when you find it. And so that's where you really make your money. This is clearly somebody that had some money. They have really nice specialized road bikes. They also have really nice golf clubs. I know golf clubs, those are really good sets and everything is neat in the plastic bins. Plastic bins in the storage space typically means that it's somebody that does have more valuable things. If they're not just getting a cheap box, they want their stuff to stay away from the elements, from the humidity, but also be strong and be protected inside of there. So I've sent this video and these pictures to two of my cycling friends that are big into cycling space. And these bikes, are, they're in good condition, so that's good. The low end, I could get $500 for each one of these bikes. The high end, one of them says $1,000, one of them says potentially $1,500 for each one of those bikes. So if we just say on the low end, four bikes, just on the four bikes right there, that's $500 a bike. If you're looking at $2,000, add on the golf clubs, that's $2,250. Let's add a little bit extra for the smaller bike and let's add some extra on there just in case we can get more than the minimum $500 for these bikes. So based off of that, I'm going to say that my break even point for this locker for where it would make sense would be $2,600. If I spend anything more than $2,600, it does become a bit risky because I don't know what the other items are inside of the storage locker. This one has a rule within the last minute. If you bid on it, then it bumps it up another minute. So we're gonna wait till there's two minutes left and we're gonna place our high bid, which is the max bid that I'm willing to spend of the $2,600. And then we're gonna see what happens. Hopefully I'll get it for less than that, but if it goes above it, okay, I'm just gonna walk away. 
When people do the live storage auctions where they're there, all they do is open the door, you get like 20 seconds to peek inside of it with a flashlight, and then you've got a bid against eight random people. The online system is a nice way to do it because you have plenty of time. You have it a week or two weeks to look at these pictures, to do some research and do some homework. Now on the flip side, it does drive the prices up because there's a lot more people that are doing that same thing, but you can get a better idea of what things you're buying and do some research before. Okay, here we are, two minutes left. In the last hour, not one person has bid. Actually, in the last 24 hours, it's been stuck at 1701. Yes, I've been watching it for more than 24 hours. So it's, I think it's time. I'm gonna make a bid on this. Oh, somebody just bid $2,400, here we go. All right, so I am the high bidder right now. There's three minutes left on it. It's at $1,800. All right, so now we just wait and we watch. We are under a minute. We have 50, 48 seconds left. Just walk away, everybody. Everybody but Jimmer. Oh, somebody just bid $200 more. It's at $2,012. That adds another minute to it. We're at 139. 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Did you get it? I know I'm the high bidder. It just says zero. It just says zero, but it doesn't say if I got it. Or does it say if you got it? I'll refresh it. We won the auction, 2012. That was a good year. Okay, so. Now we gotta go to San Diego. And now for step two, to get the actual items out of the storage locker it is the next day. I am here. I paid the $2,012, plus I needed to pay extra in taxes. I'll put on the screen what it is. I think it was like $134. And then I also had to pay 15% fee to the auction website. So now we need to get the things out. This is the exciting part. Well, it's a lot like the pictures. Man, it is dark in here. I don't see any. Lights, are there lights? Nope, no lights. Okay, one, two, three sets of golf clubs and then a mini like junior set down below. We've got this white specialized bike. I'm trying to see the name of it. I can't quite see the name, but that's a, that's a nice looking bike. It's upside down. We have this one here. It says Vita on it, specialized Vita. Really good condition, nice seat. This is the one that we could kind of see in the, in the picture. And then you've got the little junior one here, specialized. Horchata? Horchata something? And what is this guy? Oh, it's like a little go-kart thing down here. Okay, that's cool. And then one, two, three, four bins, a little trash can thing back there, some laundry baskets. Okay, not bad. That shouldn't be too difficult to get through and also to take home and to be able to sell. Check out this facility. It has carpet inside of it. I'm on the second level. Metal walls here, like interesting little metal walls. And then it does have an elevator. There it is. There's the elevator. No writers are allowed to go in it, but that should work. I will just get all the things, put them inside of the elevator, and then just take the elevator down, throw it in the truck, and we're good set to go. All right, let's get to it. This little thing is super cool. Ugh, it's pretty heavy. It has the charger, it's a razor thing. I would imagine a few hundred bucks for this guy. I'll look it up, we'll find out in this video. The first set of clubs. Oh my gosh. Okay, the Grand Golf Club. That's a nice golf course around here. Ooh, baby, look at this. Okay, Montana 72 Ghost Tour Even Roll. That's a cool putter. These are pretty nice. Nice tailor-made SLDRs. A Cleveland wedge. Ooh, that's a nice tailor-made 60 degree lob wedge. Okay, not the nicest driver, a little older. Some golf balls down in there. The next one. How about the tiny golf clubs? <laughs> US Kids Golf, Lincoln used to use this kind. Some tailor-made, oh man, little kids golf clubs, right-handed, bringing back the memories of Lincoln. Okay, next one. Oh, there's even more golf clubs in here. Did I miss those earlier? All right, so we got some Ping Irons G25s. Ooh, that's, that's another one of those tailor-made drivers. All right, nice golf bag. Two more golf bags. Ooh, I love the Rocket Balls clubs. These are the Rocket Balls drivers, heads. Daytona Ghost Tour Black. Oh, what, golf shoes? <laughs> Ashworth golf shoes, okay. Last set of golf clubs, it is dark back here. Callaway X Hot, X2 Hot. This definitely is a girl set. So five golf clubs and five bikes. <laughs> and a scooter. Um, this is some sort of gate. It looks like another type of gate. 
And then we've just got these right here. So I would have to believe that we are going to get our money back just from these items. We will know in this video, but hopefully there's some sort of surprise inside of here that's, that's valuable and worth something. It just has some bottles inside of it and some paper. Okay, this one just has a rug inside of it, a giant rug. A folding chair, a really nice bike pump, which makes sense. Another chair, the Hunger Games book. That's pretty much all that was in this one, so not too exciting inside of that bin. Oh, look at that. Pro V1 golf balls, that is nice. Those are like 45 bucks right there. The other golf balls, some more Pro V1s. We got a small version of the Koran, Taboo. Okay, so this is brand new. Gloves and bike shorts. So, ooh, those are some nice golf shoes right there. These ones are a little more used, but I really like those Adidas golf shoes. More shoes in here, more golf shoes. In a real scenario for me when I get this stuff, I usually keep a lot of the things and I use them, like the golf balls, the golf shoes I would use them. But for this video to show you how much money we can make, I'm gonna try to sell most of the stuff. Look at the handle on that. That is a massive handle. These are good quality. I would think maybe people will buy these too, I don't know. Oh, ho, ho. we hit the mother load of bike safety helmets everywhere. A nice Bell motorcycle helmet. An actual motorcycle outfit right there. This one's REI, Aria. This bin is gonna give us some money too. It's not a safe, it's not Pokemon cards, it's not coins, it's not some of the things that we've gotten that are super valuable. All of these little things add up. Oh, these have wheels on the bottom of them even. The next one, this is like the last little box here. All right, we've got a nice tennis racket here. Personal cleaning cloths. Not my favorite thing in here, but 20 adult disposable washcloths. That's pretty much it in that bin right there. Can confirm it is a gate. Another gate. Uh, 17 gallon tub. Two small pogo sticks. This one is the spooner. A random pair of used shoes. The final remaining items are all wooden boxes. So that's the locker. Other than the motorcycle helmets, maybe the golf shoes, we really didn't find much. I mean, much other than, than the stuff that we saw. It's probably gonna take me, I don't know, three weeks to sell all these items. I'll price them aggressively to try to get them sold. Step three, coming up next. Welcome back, it has been three weeks, maybe four weeks. It's been a while since we've given an update, but for you, it's the same video. I've been selling everything. Like Big a box. Time. She Big sold time. everything. I didn't yeah. sell anything. Leslie sells it. On Facebook Marketplace. Have but do you just one? post it on Facebook Marketplace or don't you have to like go and share it in some certain groups? So I share it in certain groups. So like our town, there's like multiple St. George, you know, Marketplace groups. So I okay. share it to normally two to three. If it's a, like a higher value item, I'll even do it all the way up to Salt Lake. Whatever you price it at, they're gonna say, I want half the price. So always list it a little bit higher, knowing that you need to go down because otherwise they don't give you stars. And I want five stars. She has all five stars I have five right stars. Now. But she always does it a little bit higher. So there's some good tips. One time we sold our fancy camera lens and Leslie went and found some camera groups on there yeah, and shared awesome. it in the camera groups. And I've nationally. been trying to sell it for like months just locally. And within one day we had like multiple people. So just find the groups. You have to like be accepted into the group, but it's so worth it and people are really fast. But don't ever ship anything unless you actually have proof. That's the other thing. Yes. Like you have to, because there's lots of scammers out there. There are. If I remember right, we spent around $2,000 on the storage locker. There were some fees associated, some taxes on site, and then also a fee to the storage website. So we'll put on screen exactly what that number is. Were the bikes hard to sell? The bikes weren't that hard to sell. The yeah. first day, the first three sold. So we sold one bike for $475. The next bike we sold for $325, then we sold another bike for $420, and then one of them took a really long time to sell. Yes. It was like the last thing that this we sold. This was the nicest one. It was the black one. I, I loved it. It was matte black, and that one sold for $340. We started around $500, yeah. dropped it all the way down, sold it for $340. So, golf clubs. Now, I took a couple of trips to the golf shop, and I was able to sell some of that. 
Okay, we are leaving the golf score store right now. I was surprised that you got as much as you did. So tell them how much you got. $708 for a few of the sets, $255 for another one. So basically $1,000 from the golf clubs. No bags, just the golf clubs. When I did sell the last set, the guy at the shop did ask me, why aren't you selling these yourself, like on Facebook, like the rest of your stuff? Because I told them what I was up to at the storage locker, and I was, I was like, well, because I sell them here, you guys do a good job. Then, of course, I walked out, and I'm like, oh, I could have made more yes. money. It probably would have taken a longer amount of time. The amount of people that had to come to our house to, like, you know, test things out, and whether they wanted it or not, so yeah. it definitely takes more time, but... It was we could nice. have gotten probably another 300, I bet. But the one thing that I didn't expect is I was going to send it to Goodwill all of the golf bags that were like used, yes. dirty. Yes, we had to put them on Facebook. And literally, I think I sold those in two days to one mom. She wanted all four bags. We sold them for $120. She was so excited. Every member of her family needed a bag and she was just excited. So $120, awesome. Leslie killed it with that. <laughs> the kids' gates. We sold both of them for $30. Yeah. Not bad. We sold lawn chairs for like sporting events, $10 a chair. Motorcycle, like oh, yeah. bullet bike racing, pants, and like a jacket. They were kind of gross. Like they, they kind of really smelled boring. funky. They were dirty, they had like grease on them. So we sold those pants for $95. So the guy came and it was funny, he actually put them on in my garage and they fit him perfectly. And he was like, so my happy. mom's gonna be so happy now that I'm wearing this safety stuff when I'm out riding my bike. So I was like, okay, you really can't sell everything. Yes. Pogo sticks, little tiny pogo sticks. Yes. I never even met the person. I just trusted them. They venmo me beforehand and I left it outside the front door and said, come pick it up whenever. $20. Yes. And then we had some helmets. We sold one helmet for $15 to somebody that was already buying a bike. There was a kid's bike that was $80 and I sold a helmet for $5 to them. So that little tiny specialized kid's bike. There was like seven helmets or something. So random people would just come, try on helmets. Yeah, so $60 from the helmets. Yeah. This Razor scooter thing. Somebody came and bought that. And it was for like a, a kid that was like in his 20s and he wanted to do it with his younger siblings. It was really cute. Yeah, actually. it was adults that bought that bike, <laughs> that thing. So the grand total of all of the things that we sold was $3,173. It did take some time. Of course, I didn't factor in gas for driving. You gotta have a truck to be able to pick up the stuff. And then also measuring our time for like taking pictures and posting them and then meeting with people and then talking to all the people online. There definitely is time involved in that. But I guess my whole point of making this video, if you were looking for a good way to make a little extra money, there's tons of different ways to like flip things on the internet. And um, while I was nervous a little bit during this video, we did it. Just took a little bit extra time. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. A little educational video, fun, and uh, on to the next one. Good job. Sure. Yes, my name on this is Jimmer. I had to come up with the name. Thought it'd be that. Probably have to change it after this so that people don't look for me on this site and outbid me all the time just because they know it's me. Filling myself up with energy. Oh. <laughs> that was more than energy. <laughs> Ninjago. Oh no. I thought this was part of it. Those are barely, barely, barely even used at all.